So welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at why producers are the highest paid person on a film set and why everybody wants to be one. Now, you won't be surprised that those two questions go together. It basically breaks down to power, control, and money. So you may have noticed when you're watching some movies with some big stars in them, that the stars end up getting a producer credit on the film. Now, why is that? Why does Brad Pitt want to be a producer of his own movies? Or why does Christopher Nolan want to produce the movie he's directing? And why does Kevin Feige, who's the president of Marvel Studios, want his name as the producer on all of the movies that he creatively directs? Um, surely, He's a studio head. Is he really coming to set every day and you know working out where they're going to buy lunch and you know solving uh, power supply problems or you know dealing directly with the unions? All of these people want to be producers because that is how you make the most money on a film. There is a great quote from Sean Connery uh, when he started acting in Bond movies in the '60s. He said that I would go to actors' houses and I would see pictures of them on their wall. And then I would go to producers' houses and I would see Picassos and Renoirs on their wall. The idea being that producers, uh, even though actors get all the exposure, they get all the fame, producers walk away with a lion's share of the budget. Now, why is that? Well, a budget for a film is either agreed upon or negotiated or basically uh, put forth by the financiers, usually in Hollywood, the studio. So they say, we have. $60 million to shoot this film. We have $100 million to shoot this film. The producer then goes and, as the person responsible for the day-to-day -day finances of the movie, goes and creates a budget. He, he or she asks, okay, costume designer, how much will it cost? Uh, how much can we get the actors for? And puts together line item budget and the studios that hopefully uh, is the amount of money that the studios said that they can donate to dedicate to the project. Then the producer is given not that amount in a lump sum, but usually that, that amount over the time that they're going to need it, and they spend the money and deliver the film. If they go over, or they look like they're going to go over, they may be fired even. But if they go under, they essentially get to keep that money um, as profit. Say they make a $60 million film for $40 million because uh, the, the quotes that they got turned out to get be lower, or the amount of days that they shot turned out to be less they keep the difference. Um, not always directly into their bank accounts, but they, you know, as long as they come under the amount of money that the, they budgeted, no one's gonna look too hard where the money is going. So if they have an extra, if they come under for the cinematography budget and then they put that money into a million dollars in C47s, uh, the studio isn't really gonna um, look twice at that. C47s are actually closed pegs. Uh, they're called C47s because studios wouldn't pay uh, money for clothes pegs because they thought they could just buy them at the store. But producers got very good as the ones controlling the budget at allocating money in a way that benefited them. And uh, if the studio is getting a $60 million film for $60 million, why do they care where the money goes? As long as the film doesn't look cheap um, or people don't complain, usually no one will look too hard at where the money was spent as long as the product is delivered for that amount. So that's why producers can be notoriously stingy and difficult to get paid from and they negotiate really hard because they're essentially working with their own money. Uh, meaning that if they can save a dollar here and a thousand dollars there and a million dollars there, it ends up in their own pocket. Now they're also gonna get a producing fee and their production company will get a production company fee to cover those overheads. They also might have a development deal if they're big producers, meaning they get a certain amount of money every year from the studio to, to you know, option projects and develop projects. But you can see really easily how uh, the person who's controlling the budget, the producer, has what you would call moral hazard in allocating that budget, meaning that they have the incentive to allocate more to themselves and uh, less to the film. This is why pretty much big stars and big directors are always producing their own movies. It's not necessarily because they wanna make money on the side, though I'm sure some do. It's because if they're the producer, that means they're signing off on where the money is going and it stops a, you know, another producer from trying to make their movie as cheaply as possible 
um, and then pocketing the difference. If you're, if Brad Pitt's the producer of Brad Pitt of World War Z, for instance, everyone working on the production team is going to be an employee of Plan B, his company, um, or a friend of his, or someone that he trusts. It means that uh, the film, the money is going to end up on the screen or in his pocket. This is so you don't end up with you know cheap looking CGI, you know badly mixed sound, bad music, all of these things that the producer could potentially have budgeted say a million dollars for music, and then turn around hire the cheapest bid. Um, and keep the difference for themselves. Producing really boils down to control. Who has the ability to decide where the money is spent? Yes, the director is the ability to say, okay, you stand there and you say this, and I want the wall green, and I want the light to come from this direction. But without a say in how the money is spent, he, he or she only has the resources available to them. So it's hard to make, you know, Lawrence of Arabia if the producers only got you 10 extras. You need a thousand or 10,000 extras to make that. So it's not, uh, the director obviously has to be involved with the producer, but if the director is a producer as well, they can guarantee that they're gonna be able to allocate resources where they think that's important to make the movie that they wanna make. As a little aside, you may have seen the list PGA behind um, different people's names. Uh, you know, Kevin Feige PGA, interestingly enough. Um, the PGA is the Producers Guild of America, and it was formed to stop people who aren't involved in the production of the film getting producer credits. Uh, so basically, the, to get PGA after your name, you have to be, you know, pay dues to the Producers Guild, and you have to have been on set a certain number of days, say 80% of the days of the film. Now, if you're a star, or you're, you know, Tom Cruise on Mission Impossible, or Brad Pitt on uh, World War Z, you're always gonna be on 80% of the day. So that's not a problem for them to get the PGA. But Kevin Feige, I think is really interesting because, you know, if he's producing six films at the same time, how is he on set for all of them? The only way you can do that is if they're all shot in a central location, like you know Atlanta Studios or whatever it is, so that he can you know just drop in for an hour of every day of every film and get his PGA credit, which allows him to get I think residuals in the same way that actors get a whole bunch of other benefits. There's also the interesting thing of credit jumpers, which is people who angle for a producer credit even though they didn't do any of the producing. They didn't raise the money, they didn't sell the film, they didn't uh, contribute in a meaningful way to producing the film. They were just, you know, either someone at the studio, you know, they wrote the book the film's based on. They have the power to negotiate a producer credit even though they weren't one. Um, Harvey Weinstein was notorious for this. He wanted to be listed as a producer on every movie that Miramax and later the Weinstein Company did, even though he had uh, he was really just writing the check to start with. And the reason was is so that if the film won an Oscar, he had the ability to get up on stage um, and accept the Oscar in front of the whole world and convey this uh, image of parent success that uh, allowed him to get away with his crimes. Not the worst thing that Harvey Weinstein did, but uh, definitely a big thing in Hollywood and something that the PGA was formed to avoid of legitimate producers who actually work really hard for years on these films, only to have to share a credit with like seven other people um, who you know put money into the film or introduced someone. That really is what the executive producer credit is for. That is my breakdown of why producers get paid so much on films more than everybody else usually. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in filmmaking directly, check out canonmasterclass.com. I have a bunch of paid courses there that will teach you a lot about the inside of the film industry and practical skills in cinematography, lighting, directing. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.